Do you have a brick wall in your family history research? Are you unsure if those people in the records are the right people? Are you stuck and can't get back another generation? Here are 10 tips to help you figure it out. Now, if you follow this process exactly, you will have much better odds than the average family history historian. Family history historian, what is that? You will have better odds than the average person to break down those brick walls. Now you will find more records than anyone else online and you can share it with your family with confidence that it's accurate. All right, there is a free handout for this episode. Links for that are in the description box. If you find any part of this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe so you get more videos like this one. All right, 10 tips, let's go. All right, tip number one, start with the ancestors in which you have confidence. The person you know about, because you don't want to start with the person you don't know about because you don't know what you don't know, right? This is your starting ancestor, the one that you have confidence about. Then create a research question about the next step. What is it that you want to know? Who is it you want to know about? That is your target ancestor. So that's tip number one, is to start with what you know and write a research question about your target ancestor, okay? Now, tip number two is to gather all the evidence. These are the documents, the DNA, everything that you have for the starting ancestor, the immediate family for the starting ancestor, all the siblings, hopefully you've researched all the siblings, and what you might have for the target ancestor, okay? So basically you're gathering all that evidence, just getting it all in one place, and for your target ancestor, the siblings as well. Tip number three is to organize this evidence in chronological order. I don't care if you have to lay it out on the floor or you have it electronically on your desktop, just try and kind of put it in chronological order. And that way the next steps become easier. Step number four is to transcribe all of these documents. Now, this is a pain point for some people, but I promise you if you take the time to transcribe the documents, you will find evidence, you will find details you've never seen before. I promise you, when you transcribe documents, you wanna also be looking for all those little details, like the form number that the, you know, all of the, like if you have a death certificate, look at the form number, look at everything. Cause when you transcribe it, you're gonna see those details you never noticed before. All right, tip number five is to evaluate the documents and the evidence, okay? When was it created? Note every detail, even the form numbers, you know, like we mentioned, is it a copy or an original? One of the reasons why you're looking at that form number or the date that the form was created helps you determine when the document was created. Because a lot of times these birth, marriage, and death certificates are created long after the actual event. So are you looking at an original or a copy, right? Hmm? Evaluate the evidence. Hey, did you know that you can get everything I produce all in one place, commercial free? Well, now you can at the Genealogy TV Academy. For one membership price, you can get an all access pass that includes all of the online courses, all of the YouTube channel videos dating back to 2022, early release of any new videos coming up on the YouTube channel, the live classroom instruction via Zoom, and the handouts and worksheets associated with all the videos. If you wanna learn more, go to genealogytv.org forward slash academy. All right, tip number six, abstract the documents. Now we've transcribed everything. So now we're gonna take all the boilerplate information. We're just, you can line that out and then everything that's left, all that, once you remove all that boilerplate information, everything that's left is the juicy goodness that comes out of those documents. And that abstracted information is what you want. You want to pull all of that abstracted information. You can create an actual abstract. That's a skill we talk about at the academy, you know. All right, so transcribe an abstract, right? So step number six is abstract. Tip number seven, create research notes. Another pain point for some people, they don't want to create research notes, but I promise you, if you're stuck and you want to break down a brick wall, this is the key. Create one research note per ancestor. Sometimes I'll do an ancestral couple if I don't have very many documents about them. But eventually they get broken apart into individual people because they were individuals before they got married, right? They're still individuals after they get married, let's face it, okay? But the reality is you want different sets of research notes because there's life before and after those marriages a lot of times. So um, you want to keep individual research notes, especially if people have multiple marriages and that kind of stuff. 
you get the idea, okay? So you, need, you may need to open several research notes at the same time while you're doing your research, I'm just saying. So you might have, you know, John is the husband, research note over here, and Jane the wife over here, and you're updating as you do your research on those research notes. Start creating research notes. You want to do this in chronological order. The chronology, I've been asked in comment questions, uh, comments about this, to do this in chronological order is the date of the event in the document. So a date of death or a date of birth, or sometimes if you have multiple events in one document, like a death certificate that tells you the birth date, you want to put a birth event in your research notes and source the death document or whatever your best document is for that event. So if you end up with a birth certificate, then you're gonna to want to source the birth certificate, not the death certificate, because it's a better source for a birth. So now what you're doing is you're on a death certificate, you would put a birth date. If that's the only date, the only document that shows a birth date, then you would use that source the death uh, document. And then at the end of the chronology of the person's lifetime, you would put the death date, the burial information, all of that at the end and again source the death certificate. Okay? Does that make sense? So when you're creating research notes, also keep in mind this is a living, breathing document. You're constantly updating it as you do research. So don't share it online because somebody's going to timestamp it at that moment in time and you may have added a lot more information or come to other conclusions. So I personally do not share my research notes online for that very reason because I'm constantly updating them as more records become available. Tip number eight, add abstracted details into your research notes. So you did that transcription, then you abstracted the information. Now you want to put it in chronological order into your research notes. And again, you may have multiple events for one document, but you want to add that because your research notes are, you're creating a, a timeline of your ancestor's life. All right. And don't forget to cite your sources. That's super, super important. Just, I don't care how you cite your sources, just do it in the footnotes. Just hit a reference, like if you're using Word, hit references and insert a some sort of source citation into your documents. Add what is missing. So as you are creating these research notes, you can highlight that in red. I'm missing a, a birth certificate or I'm missing a marriage document or I'm missing burial information, whatever. Put that in red in your research notes because then your research notes are, is doing multiple duties. It's creating a timeline of your ancestors. It's basically creating a list of everything that you found, both for your confirmed ancestor and your target ancestor, as well as becoming your research plan. So by highlighting that stuff in red, it becomes your research plan and it's all in one place. Research those missing documents. Now you've created this list of things that you need to look for. Look everywhere. Look on Ancestry, Family Search. Look on and offline for your records. Go look at the state archives. Look at the federal archives. Go to WorldCat online. Go to Archive Grid. Go to the local libraries and the county courthouses. Think of all the places that those documents could be. And if you don't know, go to Family Search Wiki. So if you're not familiar with the Family Search Wiki, go to FamilySearch.org. Sign in. It's free. Go to Search. Drop down to Family Search Wiki and then drill into the location in which you're researching, usually at the state level is best. And then start digging into some of those records, those hyperlinks, as to where those records might be. Don't forget the Family Search Wiki. It's always a great resource. All right, now there is a bonus tip coming up, but number 10 is to conclude your findings. If you have pulled everything there is to find, you likely have more information than anyone else online. The odds are high that you will solve this family history mystery of yours, you are going to have the documents that everybody else is going to be copying from you because you have done this reasonably exhaustive research. You have gone through these 10 steps. If after this process of this reasonably exhaustive research and you have not solved it, it might be that it can't be solved. So at some point the paper trail is going to run dry, but it could be that either the documents or the technology that is available to us today is not robust enough for you to find your solution. So if you've gone through this whole process and you still are not finding the answer to your problem, you might want to set it aside for a month or two and come back to it with some fresh eyes. Because a lot of times when we look at it again, we've been so deep into it for so long that when we get back to it, sometimes just a fresh set of eyes re reviewing our research notes 
and taking a look at it again, or maybe new hints have popped up with new records, all right? Hey, we're going to get back to that video here in just a moment, but I want to let you know that Genealogy TV has a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Links for all of that are in the show notes below. All right, let's get back to it. Here's the bonus tip. Write your conclusions into your research notes. This is what you have found. Correlate all the evidence, all of the facts, and come to a conclusion as to why the facts are what they are, okay? And then you want to write out why that is. Put it into your research notes. Save your documents. Save early, save often. Hit that save button all the time, okay? It's, just, it's not going to hurt anything, right? This checklist is free. There is a link for that in the description. If you want to learn more, see these other videos that are on the screen for you now. And subscribe for more Genealogy TV videos to show up in your YouTube feed. All right, we'll catch you next time.